Uh, across the region, um, we produced about 12 of what we call issue papers, which are up to date reviews of the state of understanding and knowledge on topics. Um, we then look over to these three here. There are a couple on coastal theme that were um, being managed by PEI, and most of those are finished. Some of them are available. Um, these are the three that we produced in advance of that we managed. So that was the resilient flooding, insurance issues, and policy and planning. So there's about a dozen of those. Again, it's, it's reference information. They're, they're quite good. They give you an overview of the kind of state information. They give you contacts, who's working in the area, that kind of thing. So they're aimed to be useful from the hands on references. Um, GIS genetics, I guess, is an interest of yours. Um, this is something that right now is an internal tool that we're, we're just working on in our department of genetics group. And um, so we have this uh, growing body of radar data, um, both in and on the coasts. And so um, the CDC two areas where we're doing, doing work, the Cadman Peninsula and uh, Port Elgin, where they were affected by steam flood from just a year or so and this is a tool, and we're trying to, uh, there's a little video in here, if I can get that to work, I can show you it a bit more uh, dynamically, but basically it's a little tool um, that allows you to show the area, zoom in dynamically into the area, and run um, a water level progression um, across a range of water levels, and basically bracketing the sea levels that we uh, have um, data for from now up to 2100, and see what that means on the ground in some detail. Uh, so you basically scan up the point of going and it will progress through and it shows you um, in some detail what that looks like. Um, so working on that, um, program is basically done for it. It uses a system called the Ministry of Flux Field from the Ministry of Jones, and we're familiar with that, which is used for a lot of other provincial mapping on the site of GIB. And so ultimately this will be on GIB and we'll be able to go in there and explore that and have some information about what that means. Um, we already have in that that information we don't know the delineation on the GOMB. And so we're planning to put all the products like that on there, <coughs> run along and making information you know, available to people, um, which is one of the key things that we are working on. Um, it's not a little information piece that we've developed, um, which is again, um, in terms of understanding and giving people information on like, this climate change or what's really happening. We've developed um, some information products that we call climate change indicators. And um, we've, we've looked around for data sets and found some good ones um, and uh, worked up information on them and go on a variety of different things. Um, this one is on maple, maple sport season, um, precipitation, ice season, and ice out to pine and rivers, uh, frequency of white Christmas, uh, various things like this to communicate with folks about climate change. There's a couple of coastal indicators in there for a number of locations. This one is a uh, frequency of uh, high storm surge events. Um, I think we have two locations in there with that data and it's basically showing an increasing frequency of those high storm surge levels. We have a skin map and um, we have a link, I think, in there. Other indicators, sea ice, um, Prevalence in the region and showing both decades how that, how that is changing. Um, when we do a lot of analysis on climate data, the 2000s really stands out as a different decade. Um, there's been quite a stock change there and a lot of things in, in that last, last decade. Um, just a bit of information here we're having a conference in the fall where we'll be presenting a lot of these study results in November. Uh, that's some copies that I have out here for you can take them. Um, so it's going to be here in November in Fredericton in the middle of November and um, this information is going online you guys are on here. So if you're around, you can come along and come along and find out more. And uh, yeah, it's going to be this a theme that uh, was just in. So I don't know how that happened, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> We got a whole collection of those. <laughs> so I think that's in my talk. Um, there's a video in here, and I'm not sure if I can run that, um, Andy. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's on here, yeah. It's um, just to demonstrate that that might be a widget, so I don't know if we can, um, we can find it. Um, okay. So, where is it? Um, I'm going to 
this thing in. So you see if this runs. It runs with this show a little bit about that. Um, <coughs> and that widget that I showed you there. So, okay. So, um, here we go. We'll just do this one still on its own, so it shows you different. This is a journey map here. So this is the uh, thing you can set it right away, and it shows this orientation loop going through here. And it shows you the level, and it shows you the level of the orientation on the ground. Um, there's the specific zones where we have this information bounded by the line there. Um, but you can zoom into, you know, right up, right down to the cracky level with this and explore this. And so, um, it's a little complex setting this stuff up because we have to map culverts and connectivities and that kind of thing to get realistic you know, data in the ground. Um, so right now we have this little map, and then we have this is uh, put over in there. Um, into that, so you can see the, the domain that we have there. Um, but it's another another tool. We find these visualization tools very influential when we're talking to people and trying to show them, you know, the future and what they think it's going to mean for them. Um, this kind of thing is, is extremely influential. So um, more tools like this, I think, would be would be good to have. That's the way the photo backed up. And where yeah, possible, we can um, we have tested these against known flood and known elevations. So okay, that's it. Um, that was a great question. Yeah, I think it's How, um, what's the coordination like between the, the work that you're doing and some of the findings, uh, the, the models that you've been running, and, uh, and the folks uh, from uh, New Brunswick environment that are, are you know, charged with the coastal areas protection policy? Or, um, I, I see. Yeah, I can just say that. I'm in the rock because it's just around the corner from the south and we talk a lot. Um, the other interesting thing is, um, we have an engineering team in the department who, who are responsible for planning uh, all the unincorporated areas that don't have their own municipal structure. So all projects that go into those areas are handled by those provincial engineers. And so we can put all this information in front of them as an example. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know, I suppose we shouldn't be surprised, but we were a little bit surprised in a way that, you know, okay, yeah, we, we're right, we use that then. Um, and, uh, and they are. Um, it, it is it's kind of a bit of an education in, in the real world when this when that starts to happen because um, there are a number of projects um, right now that are basically held up because they're looking at it and we're saying, well, here's, here's what the single is going to be in the future. You really want to go ahead with that development there? So, so I guess we can't recommend that. Yeah. And so then we go back to the community and say, well, what? We can't support this. And of course, there's an extremely strong push in the other direction then, um, because these are folks that want improved infrastructure. They want, uh, in, 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 in a couple of um, examples that I know of, where they don't have any drinking water infrastructure there right now. It's all completely out of the you know, cottages have built up and so on. And they have literally, you know, the water supplies, a whole pipe coming down the road from the neighbor, or they, it's, it's, uh, and they have no proper steel system. And so they're saying, well, we want to want some water lines put in, steel lines put in this area. Well, and look at that and say, well, 40 years, this is not going to be viable. So, 75 to 100 years is a good one for those things. So, so well, can't recommend you support that. And then, you know, local or whatever, you know, it goes to them. But, but um, the good thing is that they're, they're really taking this stuff seriously. And so, yeah, we could be developing those relationships with those folks. And so, you know, they're engineers, they're pretty smart people. You can give them a technical report and they understand it. They can, they can take that on board. And then they go back and in their briefings, they use that information, and it's being used. So, I guess that all along, the power of this is, is there. And if you have the guidance, um, people will listen. Because you're, you're telling them, well, you're telling me that's the number. There's the science. That's it. Okay. I guess we better do something. Um, now, you know, Policy versus legislation is a, is a tricky thing. Like we have coastal policy, but we don't have a you know, we don't have as tough a legislation as we would like to say you don't shall not do this or that in many cases. So 
the story and looking at the prisoners because a lot of you know, developed first mass later kind of thing going on in the case of the other ones in the city. Um, so there's a long way to go to keep them out of it. But, um, you know, wherever we can, we, we, you know, we work with these decision-making friends. So, um, in the advance that we have an interdepartmental committee across the world government departments that we've been together regularly to share the information that we have like this so that they know what we're doing what we have. Um, we try and encourage all them to make, you know, mainstream this in there and all the processes. Um, you know, it's a bit of a patch of it. Some of them are doing the really good job of it. Some of them aren't, aren't there really yet. Yeah. Um, gradually we're developing some, some champions out there that, that are doing that. So, yeah. mm. Thanks for the presentation. Yeah, um, you're welcome. I was curious as to how the rock areas were chosen. Uh, just with it would seem that those areas that were selected have a very distinct advantage over some of the areas of the that weren't selected for review. And I'm just wondering um, whether you have a sense that other municipalities are at the capacity or going through these types of studies and um, uh, you know, what the status there is. And also, just the the widget, the, uh, the uh, projections based on LIDAR, are those restricted to the rough areas that we see? Um, okay, first question. Well, I mean, the capacity of these municipalities to do this kind of work is very big, of course. But for looking, for example, on the building, but that work is only part of the work that's going on like this in the province, not all of the work. Like I said, there's other, other funding mechanisms and work that work going on. In some cases, you know, they have their own work going on for the team dance. Um, and so there are other uh, studies going on that, that some of the municipalities are involved in that are completely separate from the work. Um, one other piece, and um, it's going to be presented, it'll be presented on a conference in the fall, is um, a piece of work being um, funded by insurance bureau. The Federation has been involved in called the Municipal Risk Assessment Tool. I don't know if you heard of that at all. Or, yeah. So, you know, they've been involved in that, for example. Uh, and other communities have been doing their own initiatives and own studies based on sometimes, you know, the facts that they've had, floods that they've had, or whatever, and they're buying and consultants and they're doing the work. Um, so, obviously, yeah, the RAC is only focused on a, on a, on a smaller number, um, with the idea that, you know, we learn things that are, that are applicable and shared, and can be shared with, with others so that they can uh, and uh, learn about and then in some cases you know, we have been able to expand to some of the smaller communities and take care of them and incur things that are like that and as far as we can have a fun and work opportunities. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the list initially was basically involved where there were people doing the work who had a concern and, you know, in some cases they were able to put some money in time and kind of into it. So that's really how that, how that worked out. Um, um, in terms of the flood we in the water, that, that kind of tool is, um, can be applied anywhere we have to good enough data. Um, sometimes it's limited by, like I said, if you know you're just having a survey data, you have to know where all these pilots are because roads or dams, you know, when it comes to, to water moving over the line, if you don't have that, it can be quite misleading because you can say, well, the water stops here, well, there's not going to stop there, it's going to go right over there. Um, and in some cases, we don't 